हेलो स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट डीबीएमएस आर्किटेक्चर सो व्हाट इट मीन आर्किटेक्चर व्हाई वी नीड दैट डीबीएमएस नथिंग बट डेटाबेस आर्किटेक्चर जस्ट इमेजिन टू डिजाइन ए डेटाबेस टू डेवलप एन टू डेवलप एनी डेटाबेस टू इंप्लीमेंट एनी डेटाबेस टू मेंटेन एनी डेटाबेस इन इन दीस एंड ऑल केसेस वी नीड अ डेटाबेस आर्किटेक्चर so nothing but in in these four types of uh, operations if we need a database architecture if if we use a or if we select a proper database architecture in the sense what the use of that one so after selecting or if we choose or if we select better architecture for our database develop database design in the sense so it helps us to retrieve the data very quickly and uh, in a secure manner to access the data it helps so that's the main advantages of a Uh, choosing a better architecture of a database so selecting the correct database architecture helps in quick and secure access to this particular data so in a case of we have a different set of different types of architectures in a database management system that one we are categorized into a for tier 1 architecture tier 2 architecture and tier 3 architecture so in tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 how we have how we are classified the architecture in these categories nothing but so in, we know that one in a uh, um, in a uh, shared location or shared concept in the sense in that particular time we we have a client side server side and database side or nothing but data store so in uh, in our application or uh, in our database architecture we, uh, how we have used these levels in which and all layers we kept these layers and all by considering this one we will come to know or we are classified the architecture into a three categories first one we will consider tier 1 architecture here we have a term tier nothing but layers how many number of layers we are using in our database management uh, architecture so this, this one is the simplest architecture because entire all the three tiers or all the three layers we are going to use it in a one layer itself nothing but one machine itself nothing but the client side and server side and database sides all the tasks we are performing it in a one machine in the sense that type of architecture we will consider it as a database management systems tier 1 architecture any time you install a database in your system and access it to practice sql sql queries it comes under a tier 1 architecture how it will come under a tier 1 architecture nothing but we are installing the sql in our system only we are accessing and uh, just imagine we are inserting a command so some we are insert we are inserting some set of data in the sense it will send to a server sql server and after uh, after performing after processing the query if it is a correct one it will insert into a database so um, uh, checking the queries sing, uh, syntax and all it will uh, we will consider as a server side actions and all again inserting the data inserting the data in the sense again we have to communicate with the database nothing but so client side also we have we we have it in our own system server side also is there in our our server our system database is also there in our system because of that one it will be considered as a tier 1 tier 1 nothing but in our database we have one layer in all, one layer we are performing all the three task nothing but three uh, task also we are performing it in a one system so because of that one so it has some set of disadvantages because of that one rarely used in a application productions and all second one tier 2 nothing but in this particular uh, uh, architecture we have a two uh, layers nothing but the client and server side we kept it in as one system and database we are kept it in a another system so two tier architecture is a database architecture where presentation layer runs on a client client nothing but the device which we have which we from which we are accessing the database suppose if you want to know the any uh, ticket reservations is there or not and if you want to check that one so we we have to send the request we have to send the request in the sense we have to access some set of sites so which sites which are the what the location of that particular site processing whether our request is correct or not all those task will be tested in our location only so in that particular case it becomes as a two tier architecture so last one database 
from where we will get a data that one we kept it as a separate one because of that one it becomes as a one more layer. So, here in a tier 1 architecture client side request processing and data are stored or kept it in a single MIS system, but in case of a two tier architecture request and processing will be performed in one system and database will be kept it in a another system. Uh, here we have we have to use some set of applications to access the database. So, for that one we have a some set of APIs nothing but ODBC and JDBC APIs we have with the help of that one we can access the database from a application side. Last one, so uh, before going to the last one here we have a one more example. So, in this diagram we will clearly identify so the application and user. So, here user he will send the request and that request will be processed in a same system nothing but the system resides in a client side. So, database only the database is kept it in a separate server or separate system that one will consider it as a client server. We have only client and server concept we have we are implementing in this particular two tier architecture. Last one after discussing the tier 1, tier 2, tier 3 we will come to know the all the three tiers or three tasks we are kept it in a different layers or nothing but in a different systems and all or different locations. So, tier 1 nothing but the first layer we have a internal level as an internal schema. So, internal schema so the name suggests as name suggests internal schema how we have designed so, how we are to the structure of the database, physical sto uh, structure of a database will be specified, nothing but which describes the physical storage structure of the database. Physical storage, we are uh, uh, what the size of that one, so which now what number of storage we have to specify for that particular field. So, entire database, how many number of GB or some set of data, uh, amount of data it contains, all those details we, we will get get from a internal store, internal level or internal schema. The internal schema uses a physical data model and describes the complete details of the data storage and access path for that particular database. Similar way to develop an application in the sense we need a architecture, so similar way to design a database architect a database also we need some set of models or some set of uh, patterns we need. So, uh, by using those patterns it creates the database in a in a uh, uh, internal schema. So, similar way the details also will be stored in that particular model. Last one, it, it provides the access path. So, oh, it, oh, in that from that particular location only we will get the location of the database where it is stored. So, no one will come to know. So, uh, the server also will not come to know, client also will not come to know un unless it specifies the path in that particular data storage location. So, the all the data storage physical storage locations or physical storage structures are stored it in a tier 1. Second one tier 2. So, tier 2 nothing but to conceptual schema that one will consider it as a server side. So, server nothing but the which and all it will be it will be placed or it will be we can consider as a intermediate level or, or intermediate layer. So, we, why in the sense so database. So, which and all request will receive from a users. So, that one will be processed in a conceptual schema. Why it will be processed in a conceptual schema? So, it contains which describes the structure of the whole database for a community of users. Community of users for them we will design we will we will um, uh, in a conceptual schema we will get the entire path. So, path where it is database is stored. So, how we have to send in which particular path we have to send a database and all. So, similar way before sending a request to our server, uh, database we uh, in a server side or in a conceptual schema we, we need to process the request. Similar way after processing we need to connect the database after connecting the database in a internal schema it returns the database to a conceptual schema after that when it again it conceptual schema should send it to a users. Before sending it to a user it, it should convert some data into the particular category. So, all those ta tasks will be taken in a tier 2 or uh, tier 2 nothing but in a conceptual schema. Last one tier 3 architecture, tier 3 nothing but clients. So, here each and every user or each and every clients may access the database simultaneously with the different uh, needs in each and every time. So, the server will be process the each and every request depending upon his request format. So, 
so this one contains the users so external or weave level includes the number of external schemas or user weaves each external schema describes the part of the database that a particular user group is interested in a in and hides the rest of the database from a database user group so here user will not come to know entire path or entire details about the database so he wants to send the information to which particular location he want to send the information only those will be come to know to the user and the rest of the things nothing but where it is stored how the structure all those details will not be known to a user nothing but it hides some set of data so this one is about tier 3 so by using all the uh, these tier 3 architecture we can achieve some set of advantages so why we need to use a tier 3 architecture nothing but to separate the user applications and physical database proposed to support the database management system characteristics some characteristics we have to implement that one then data independence nothing but to hide some set of data from a user so that one we are going to discuss it in a next session last one to to support a multiple views nothing but data will be shared in a shared location in that particular time so simultaneously multiple users you want they want to access the database simultaneously without any interruption in the sense in that particular time we need to separate the data and server side and client side in a different layers so because of that one it is a better one widely used database architecture in a application programs and all so this one is about database architecture here we have a three types of architecture tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 so this one is about database architecture thank you